Okay, so in this lecture, we're gonna cover the document object model and event handling. So, uh, as you can see, that's what we're gonna cover. So we're gonna start with the document object model. So the document object model uh, is an object uh, that's created by the browser when it loads the page. And you can kind of think of it uh, like uh, any similar, in a similar way, it's kind of similar to standard JavaScript objects. You can access different properties of it. I uh, can't remember if it's got any functions, but maybe it has. Um, and the document object model is a representation of the structure of the page or the structure of the HTML that you've, the structure of the page as created by the HTML that you've written to, to build the page. Now the JavaScript interacts with the document object model and when the document object model changes, the browser reloads the page and that can also trigger JavaScript events. So this is the general idea. So we have the markup, the HTML, um, that describes the structure of the page. And when, you, when the browser loads um, the HTML, it does two things. Well, one thing we've seen quite a lot of already, it generates a, a kind of visual representation to the user, showing all the, showing, you know, that you don't see the HTML, you see, you know, the headings, the paragraphs, the images, and so on and so forth. What the browser also does is it builds this tree structure, um, which is like the doc, which is the document object model. Um, and so this is like the, the sort of, the model corresponding to the view um, that you see in the browser. Now, JavaScript can it interact with this document object model. It can kind of change it. Um, it can act, read its different parts and so on and so forth. And when JavaScript changes this, um, the browser will reload this and display the new visualization. That's roughly what we're talking about. So here we, um, here we have a piece of HTML. I think it's from uh, Head First JavaScript Programming. And so this is the HTML, and this is the tree or the document object model that corresponds to the HTML. So you can see you've got the document, this sort of HTML is the sort of the root of the tree, the trunk of the tree. Then you've got the head with uh, three tags here, meta, title, and uh, a script tag. So each, so here this tree structure works like this. It's sort of when you've got something enclosing something else, then this is sort of higher up in the tree than this. This is like the, the trunk, if you like, and this is the branches. So this is the trunk here and these are the branches. Or in terms of the language um, mentioned a couple of lectures back, this is, these are kind of siblings, and the, the, these are kind of ch siblings of each other, and these are children of, the, of a parent element that's higher up in the tree structure. And here we've got the body again, so the body elements are wrapping all this kind of stuff, so body here is the sort of parent element or the trunk element, with all these kind of being branches coming off from the body. And so here we've got the H1 here, which corresponds to H1 here, and H1 is at the same level of the tree as this div, div here. So H1 and div are siblings. And then div contains H2 and P. H2 and 2Ps, actually. So here we have a div containing the H2 and 2Ps. And again, these are siblings. This is a parent. This is a child. So the previous lecture briefly explained how we can use document get element by ID to access and change the HTML on the page. So we had this little example. We gave an ID to a particular paragraph and we used document get element ID to access this paragraph. And then we could actually change the contents of the paragraph. And what we're doing here is we're manipulating the document object model. Here, so document, document here is a global object, the sort of the root of the document object model. Get element ID sort of searches through the tree and finds an element that has a particular ID that we're looking for. And then inner HTML is a property of the object that corresponds to a property of the element. So you can see this works exactly in the same way as any old JavaScript object. This, this is a JavaScript object, has a, a function or method in this case um, that returns a particular part of the tree, a particular element of the tree. And then we have properties of, uh, of the HTML elements, properties of the sort of leaves on the tree, if you like, and we can change those properties dynamically if we want to. So the document object model sort of only officially exists um, after the page has been fully loaded. So the element you're trying to access with it might not exist. So if you've got a very long, kind of complicated piece of HTML and you've got a bit of script at the beginning of the page that tries to access a particular part of the page, then it's possible um, that the element you're looking for might not have been loaded yet, okay? Because it might have it might be executing the JavaScript before it's loaded the rest of the page. You're not quite sure about what's gonna go on here. So to be on the safe side, it's better to call 
um, these kinds of methods in response to user actions, because typically the user is going to start interacting with the page when the page is loaded. Or um, you can put your code inside a function and instruct the browser to call this function uh, when the window is loaded. So this is, uh, so this is the sort of slightly risky way, but since it's such a small page, it doesn't really matter. But here we're kind of calling document get element by ID um, to access this paragraph without any kind of safety checks or anything like that, which is most of the time be fine, and browsers are quite clever about flicking through everything once and then doing the proper execution of the code. So you, you might be all right, but you might not. Um, but if there's a very long page, and this was like way down at the bottom somewhere, you might have some problems. So what you can do instead is you can, we're going to come to this a little bit later, you can define a, an init function. And this init function is called um, when the window loads. So the init function is doing all the stuff about accessing the paragraph and changing the HTML on it. But we're not going to call that function. That function is not going to be executed until the window is loaded. So we're saying that when the window generates an onload event, and we're going to come to that, what that means in a little bit, it should execute this function here. So that's one way in which you can uh, avoid this problem of trying to manipulate the document object model before it fully exists. Now, document get element by ID is handy in some cases. Um, but there's many other ways of accessing different parts of the document object model. You can also use document get elements by tag name. In this case, you're pulling uh, an array of the elements with a specified tag name. So suppose we've got um, inside the body, we've got a header, we've got, and then three paragraphs. So the page looks a bit like this. We've got like a header here and three paragraphs here. So what we can do now is we can get an array by getting document get elements by tag name P. So it's going to pull out all the elements that have tag name P. And then what it's doing is just outputting, outputting what, they, what they actually are. So in this case, it's doing, uh, what's doing? It's uh, changing the paragraphs in their HTML to Jupyter instead of text of the first paragraph. So when, we, when this bit of code, when the window loads, it executes this piece of code and it changes all of the paragraph texts to um, you know, Jupyter plus the index of the paragraph. And there's lots of other, lots of other ways to find elements. So I know you can't see this, but this is from the W3 Schools uh, reference. So you've got, you can access all the anchors in the page. You can access uh, all the forms. You can access all the, I'm not sure the difference between links and anchors is, but anyway. Um, <coughs> document has many, many properties, and you can use that to pull out different parts of the document object model. Now, the elements um, within the document object model have a method called set attributes. So you remember attributes are things you can add to paragraphs or images and so on that give it certain properties like class, like ID, like width, like length, and so on and so forth. And using JavaScript, we can manipulate and change those attributes. So we can call, let's say this is a reference to a paragraph, we can call set attribute to change its class value to highlight instead of a different class. And we can also access these attributes if we want to find out what they're actually set to at the moment using the get attribute method, which will return null if the attribute doesn't exist. So, yeah, this little, little example. Um, again, this is part of the init function. So we're accessing paragraph using get element by ID. This is a reference to the paragraph that has the ID my paragraph, in this case here. And what we're doing is we're setting the style to be color red. So we're doing a, an in a you know in a style changing it so we should be setting the color to red dynamically using JavaScript in this case. We can also change attributes by accessing properties. So this is a sort of slightly crude method because we're kind of doing set attributes and specifying the attribute and specifying the new value of the attribute. We can actually do this in a more neat object-oriented way. So in this case, we've got um, uh, an image with an ID and, and a source or whatever. Should have an alt attribute, but let's not worry about that. So here we're accessing uh, a reference to the image here. Var my image is get element by ID cat pick. And instead of doing the my image set attribute width 100, we can do this in a much neater way, doing dot width, just in a standard way we access any properties of any JavaScript object. We can do my image dot width equals 100, my image dot height equals 500. And this is the sort of thing you might find handy when you're building your games. And one of the attributes is a style property, and the style property we can use to control the CSS styles. And the style, you know, has all the style properties sort of inside of it. So here we've got a reference to my paragraph again, and we can change the style of that paragraph very easily by accessing the style object and then accessing the uh, 
uh, property, the style property we want to, you know, so you could do background color, border, margin, all the rest of it, all of the CSS properties you can access in this way just by doing the, the, uh, the HTML element that you want to, the reference to the HTML element, dot style, and then dot the CSS property you want to change, and you just set it to whatever you want to set it to. So that, so, so far we've accessed the uh, HTML elements, we've uh, changed their contents, and we've changed their attributes. We can also add and delete elements. We can manipulate that tree structure as we like, really. We could build a whole web page from scratch. Um, we could just have an empty web page and then add all the pages dynamically, add all components dynamically if we wanted to. So we can like create element, remove child, append child, replace child, and or just write to the output stream. So we can do whatever we like um, to the document object model within JavaScript. So that's a little introduction to the document object model, which I think you'll find pretty useful. And then the next thing I'm going to talk about is event handling. So JavaScript would be kind of boring um, if it just started, you know, just did its thing and the user just watched and that was that. I mean, it'd be handy, but most often we want to use JavaScript to interact with the user dynamically. So we want to call JavaScript when the page loads. I've given you a couple of examples of that already. But also when the user clicks a mouse, when the user moves the mouse around. I've explained timers in an earlier lecture or changes to the document object model. In all these cases, we're using JavaScript to handle different kinds of events within the browser and different kinds of events generated by the user. And we'll also use that when we're doing AJAX and communication with the server. So the terminology is that when an event occurs, you handle that event, okay? To handle an event, you supply some code um, that that's, that's executed when the event occurs. So you say, when this event happens, I want this code to be run. That's, that's what you're doing. And the code's called an event handler. And so obviously you need to make a link between the code that you want to run and the event that you want to trigger that execution of the code. Um, and so I've given this example already, right? So here uh, we've got a piece of code that we want to run when the page loads. That's just a standard JavaScript function. And what we're doing here is we're pointing, so there's a window on load event and we're saying that when this window on load event occurs, we want to call this function here, the page load handler. So window on load is actually you know, pointing now it's, um, to the page load handler. So when the browser loads the page, it will it trigger this event, um, and triggering that event will mean it will call this piece of code here. There's many different types of events um, that can be generated by HTML elements and by other, other aspects of the of the browser and the document object model. But these are the sort of useful ones um, if you're producing user activity. So on change, on click, when someone clicks on an element, when they move the mouse on, when they move the mouse out, when they press keys on it. With on key down, you need to be a little careful because uh, you need to have the focus, the, the, the HTML element that's uh, listening for that event needs to have the focus for that to work. Or unload, which we talked about. Now, one way of handling events, which isn't particularly nice or pretty and sometimes leads to problems, is um, by actually putting the, uh, specifying the event handlers um, inside the HTML itself. So I used to use this a lot, but I don't really like this anymore. So we say, so we had it as an attribute to the HTML element. So one of the attributes here is on mouse over, and we, and we specify the piece of code here that's executed um, when this event's triggered, and the same with on mouse out. So we can specify it within the paragraph, and then when the page loads, it will call mouse out when you move the mouse out, and mouse over when you move the mouse over. So this isn't, this isn't great, um, because it, I've sometimes had problems with kind of semicolons here, and you're also kind of mixing up the markup with the kind of functionality of the page, which isn't, isn't great. Um, but most of the time it'll work, so it should call this bit of code and this bit of code um, appropriately when you interact with the paragraph. This is a better way of doing it. We can actually access the events using the document object model and then attach the event handlers um, to, the, to, the, to the HTML elements as we go. And I think this is a much better way of doing it. And I'd probably rec I'd recommend you do, this, uh, do it in this way. So here, we've got a paragraph with a specific ID. And now we're going to get a reference to this paragraph here, document get element ID, we've done a million times. And now we can just, in a standard Java, we can access the properties of the paragraph. And two of these properties are the events we want to handle. So we want to say my paragraph on mouse over equals mouse over. In this case, mouse over is my fu the function I've defined here, and mouse out is the function I've defined here. So we're pointing this event 
um, to my function hit to one of my functions and this event to another one of my functions. And this is a much better way of doing this, and this can be in a separate bit of JavaScript that's been included from a separate page, and it just attaches itself um, to the HTML instead of mixing up the functionality with the markup, which isn't very, very elegant. All right, so that's a little, little demo here. Okay, so uh, a lot of, lot of talk and no demos so far, right? Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's put a paragraph in first. P I D my para, nothing very imaginative. And I'll do hello there, okay. Right, so we've got a paragraph there. Now we're gonna create, get a reference to this paragraph. We can do this all nicely. Var, give it the same name, not necessarily ideal. Document gets element D my para. So now we've got a reference to the paragraph. Now we can do my para dot on, I've got to remember this stuff, on mouse over, on mouse out. Oh, is it all small case? Yep. Over equals, we could just have an anonymous function. Okay, let's just do that. So I think that'll work because it's a global thing. So my para dot style color equals green. Okay. So we've attached our, so we're going to change, and then let's do a different one. Let's do, just to show you, it's, it's the same thing. I'll create my own function now. Change cal. Um, so it's exactly the same. My para dot style color red. Okay, so that's doing, so I've got my own function now, which I'll attach. Now I can do in the same way, on mouse out equals change color. Okay, so doing the same thing, we're getting a reference to the paragraph. In this case, we're using an anonymous function to change the color to green. So when we move the mouse over, it should go green. And when we move the mouse out, I'm going to call this function here, and that function should change it to red. So with a bit of luck, uh, this will work. Let's just see. I'm not particularly lucky with my demos normally, but there we go. So let's just move, move the mouse over. It's not working. So now a beautiful time to uh, demonstrate the use of the debugger. So now we go to the console, invalid unexpected token, line 9. Get element by ID. I've done something stupid with my doc. Get element by ID. Ah, I've got a quotation mark, right? So when you get this kind of problem, which you will do all the time, as you can see, use the console. Try and find, figure out what the error is by looking inside the console, because it's going to tell you, right? So now we can refresh it, and we haven't got an error. I move it over there, it goes green, and I move it out, it goes red. Green, red, green, red. Look at that. Great. So that's a very simple example of how you can attach events uh, to your code, to your HTML elements, and then um, and dynamically handle them. Cool. So, chapter six and chapter nine uh, cover the document object model and event handling in head-first JavaScript programming. Um, so again, if you want to understand this better, work your way through it. Do the examples and you'll and get to grips with it. So this lecture I've introduced you to the document object model and event handling, and the next lecture is going to explain how you can create and process forms.